Hello, uh, my name is Bulan Hamouda. I would like to talk to you about co-salvation and co-non-salvation of polymers and mixed solvents. What I really mean is when you have a solvent mixture, this mixture is it a better solvent or a worse solvent for the polymer. Uh, outline, these are small angle neutron scattering studies. First, mixing, demixing therm thermodynamics of polymers in solution mostly the Flory Huggins uh, theory. Uh, Co-solvation of polyethylene oxide in water ethanol mixtures. And co-non-solvation of nitpan in water ethanol mixtures. Then we'll say something about single chain conformations of nitpan water solutions. Remember this is polygon neutron scattering. So we'll use Deuterated, non-deuterated nipan, deuterated, non-deuterated water, or look for a zero average contrast condition and so on. Then final words. The mixing, demixing thermodynamics of polymer blends, the Flory Huggins model. Uh, this is for polymer blend mixtures. The Gibbs free energy has two contributions. One is entropy and one is enthalpy interaction where V1 is the volume fraction of component 1 in the blend and 1 degree of polymerization and V1 is the monomer volume well this is sometimes used for polymer solution as well is not as uh, correct as in polymer blends polymer solution degree of polymerization of component 2 becomes 1 because solvent. So using this Gibbs free energy one can talk about phase diagrams, phase boundaries, demixing and so on. This chi 1-2 is so-called Flory Huggins interaction parameter. It's the one that controls interactions between polymer 1 and polymer 2 or polymer and solvent. The first derivative of the Gibbs free energy with respect to composition is called the chemical potential, while the second derivative is referred to as the osmotic pressure. One can work it out, take the, second, the derivative twice with respect to phi1, and this is it. Okay, I think most people are familiar with Flory Huggins model. This is just a brief review. Now we're not used to many equations, but at least one or two slides. So let's look at the variation of Gibbs free energy with composition here. I'm showing three temperatures, the blue temperature, the black, and the red temperature. For the blue temperature, Gibbs free energy doesn't have any inflection points. Uh, this is the mixed phase region, the single phase region. The black temperature corresponds to a critical condition at the and the red line correspond to uh, deep inside the spinola region. Okay. These inflection points, where are they? The inflection points correspond to the spinola points. Second derivative of the Gibbs free energy with respect to composition equal to zero, that's the inflection point, correspond to spinola points can be measured with small angle neutron scattering. And the tangent here uh, meets this red curve at this point. This is called the binodal points. It can be measured with uh, light scattering or cloud points. And the middle here, uh, where the tangent is parallel to this other tangent, is a critical point. So this helps us obtain the phase diagram. So if we remember these compositions for the spinola points, for the binola points, for the critical point, and we go to the next slide, where instead of Gibbs free energy, we have temperature. There you go. This is temperature versus these other lines that were coming down. These are spinola lines. There they are. These are the binodal lines light scattering, signs, and this is a critical point. So we see the three temperatures, 
blue temperature, the black temperature, the red temperature. So this is the one phase region completely mixed for polymer blends. This is the spinola region completely demixed inside. Okay? So this is with dynamic light, this is with the sands. The region between nucleation growth region. So we can have two forms of uh, phase separation either spinal phase separation or nucleation uh, type nucleation growth type of phase separation where there's nucleating center and then uh, grows grows around that center so here there is almost like a sinusoidal wave in the spinal region where you have component one and component two alternating okay so let me say something about the so-called random phase approximation. If you remember the second derivative with respect to uh, composition is uh, inversely proportional to the scattering factor at q equals zero, this is thermodynamic limit in the forward direction, scattering in the forward direction. Okay? Uh, we have seen this formula before. This is how we relate scattering to mixing, demixing thermodynamics. In other words, scattering not only is structural uh, uh, technique, but it's also mixing, demixing uh, thermodynamic probe as well. So we said that the spinola condition corresponds to S of Q equals zero. Uh, the intensity blows up. In other words, the inverse intensity goes to zero, intensity blows up. So random phase approximation is just like this Flory Huggins formula, but taking finite Q. So the scattering cross section is proportional to a contrast factor and to the scattering factor. It's called Dirgen's RPA formula, random phase approximation, where the scattering factor is just like this, but now has some Q dependence some form factors okay so this is for polymer blends for polymer solution this is equal to one because there's no internal structure to the solvent and the group position is equal to one okay polymer blends are mean field so this works rather well for polymer blends with polymer solutions doesn't work as well because of uh, their non-mean field. Sometime to include part of this non-mean field effect one uses excluded volume type of approach to calculate the form factors for the polymer swelling, the contraction and so on and so forth. Anyway, the Florian's interaction parameter is here, can be obtained by fitting sense data. I would like to uh, say that the multi-component RPA, this RPA random phase approximation has been extended to include many components. One calculate the ca calculate the cross section, obtains phase diagram and so on. These scattering factors, <coughs> like in this case, three components, S11, S22, and S12 and so on, can be calculated for homo homogeneous polymer mixtures using this approach. So applies to polymer solutions like we're doing here. Polymer blends work rather well to copolymers, mixtures of homopolymers and copolymers. So let's look at the Flory Huggins interaction parameter. In the case where phase separation occurs upon heating, it's called lower critical solution temperature or spinol temperature. There, there it is. So when you heat up, going this way in temperature, chi gets stronger to get you into the two-phase region, this buildup of composition fluctuations. In the case where phase separation occurs upon cooling, it's the opposite. When you heat up, chi gets weaker to get you into the single-phase mixed region. This is called LCST lower critical, this is UCST upper critical. It's a variation of chi versus inverse temperature, mean field. So let's look now, instead of variation of chi, let's look at intensity 
that's good equals zero thermodynamic limit so for LCST when you heat up composition fluctuations build up so when you heat up composition fluctuations build up intensity goes up when you see an intensity going up you're going towards a two-phase region upon heating like LCST or upon cooling like UCST if you cool down the intensity goes up what does it mean you're going towards uh, towards a two-phase region so when you cool down intensity goes up you go towards the two-phase region okay so in other words one doesn't really have to do the fitting to the RPA model uh, and so on just something as simple as plotting the inverse scattering intensity in the forward direction versus the inverse temperature gives us a line that's signature or mean field so extrapolating to when the intensity blows up the inverse intensity is equal to zero gives us an estimate of the spinol temperature in this case 5% polyethylene oxide <coughs> deuterated water around 50k spinol temperature around 98 degrees C okay co-salvation of PEO polyethylene oxide in solvent mixtures now first in pure water so when you heat up you see the intensity goes up so this is a lower critical solution temperature or spinolo temperature so we see two features the high Q solvation feature and we see also a low Q clustering feature which characterizes most water soluble parameters they're not perfectly understood but we have uh, some ideas where what causes this clustering so polyethylene oxide in ethanol water there it is first in pure ethanol upper creek solution temperature phase separation occurs upon cooling if you heat up the intensity goes down You're going towards the one phase region the one phase region is here two phase region is here while in pure water the LCST if you heat up the intensity goes up one phase region is here two phase region is here so here the one phase region is at uh, high temperature and here the one phase region is at low temperature now one can map out the phase diagram with uh, various water ethanol compositions here the one phase region is up here and the two phase region is down here here the one phase region is down here and two phase regions up here if we go back here here the one phase region is here and here two phase region is here and here so I can map out the phase diagram pure ethanol UCST pure water LCST I think you got the gist of it but in here in the mid-range here there is a perfectly mixing zone where there is no demixing whatsoever there is no hint of a spinol line in other words uh, spinol temperature goes down then disappears then comes back down this way okay around 10 percent dewater so here the co-salvation phase diagram as we saw schematics and we can also have called non-salvation phase diagram where in the midsection there is no mixing zone at all so uh, demix completely called salvation of NIPAM in the water the ethanol mixtures this is NIPAM so we see that uh, in ethanol when you heat up intensity goes down so that's UCST in water when you heat up the intensity goes up so that's LCST so there you go uh, 
So when we plot the inverse intensity versus inverse temperature in degree Kelvin, we see the UCST lines, the LCST lines, which help us through extrapolation determine the spinol lines. We see that when there's little water, a lot of water, everything is fine. In between, there are no lines. In other words, there is no spinol. Uh, it's completely demixed. Okay. There is the phase diagram, measured phase diagram. So, in the case of co-solvation, we saw that the mid region was perfectly mixed. In the case of co-non-solvation, the mid uh, phase region here <coughs> is completely demixed. Doesn't mix at all between 40 and 80 percent water. By the way, um, most polymers follow the co-solvation rule, <coughs> while NIPAM is an exception, follows the co-non-solvation rule. Results? Most polymers dissolve better in mixed solvents. NIPAM is an exception. PO is characterized perfect solvation window, while NIPAM is characterized non-solvation window. I'd like to say that most solvents form cage-like structures around the polymer. We do not, we cannot get the structure of these, the cage-like structures with sands. But we can know which ones are more effective at solvating the polymer compared to others. As the scattering intensity are equal to zero. If it's low, polymer is very happy. If it's high, it's completely stressed, it's going to fall out of solution to phase separate. Okay. The last research project, single chain conformations in IPAM water solutions. Let's look at uh, <coughs> pure water. This is in uh, pure water. There it is, 4%, uh, 18K range of temperatures. We see that at low temperature, the palm is well dissolved, it's the one phase region. At high temperature, it's completely phase separated. Here, the LCST is estimated to be 32 degrees C. At 35, it's completely phase separated, completely different type of behavior. And in between, we do not understand what's going on. The, this onset of phase separation, we'd like to investigate it more closely. We see the solvation feature here. We see the local clustering feature here, and the mixed polymers completely different. We're applying the zero average contrast method to measure single chain conformations, even in non dilute polymer samples. We use deuterated and non deuterated polymers, deuterated and non deuterated solvents. So we do a contrast variation series to determine zero average contrast condition. That zero average sample contrast condition will give a single chain conformation with no interchain contributions. So the sense cross section, like in this case where we have deuterate polymer, hydrogenate polymer and solvent, it has pure terms and cross terms. Where these are the scattering gland densities. Imagine just like the color. So, in the case where we have equal degrees of polymerization of DNH polymers, this formula can be manipulated to this form where you have two main terms single chain form factor and interchain contributions. The contrast factor, scattering blend density of the average polymer minus scattering blend density of the average solvent is here. In the zero average contrast condition, this term falls out. In other words, we have only single chain form factor, can determine R RG for single chain and so on. And there's a square here. So expect to find a parabola when plot versus uh, one of these scattering blend densities. Let's look at it here. Prepare the range of samples. If you imagine this is blue color, red color, the one in between 50 50 is, let's say, green. Prepare the range of solvents, mixtures. Uh, imagine this is 
blue color, this is red color, and then in between here are many, many samples. One of these will be zero average contrast sample. And we prepared some solvents in pure D water and so on. <coughs> there you go. If we plot this versus the scattered density of uh, D water, we see that we get a parabola because of the square of the contrast factor. Now if we take the square root, parabola becomes a line. Actually it should be a broken line, but we put a minus sign for this value so that it's a line. It crosses the line uh, of uh, zero contrast right over here, so this is the zero average contrast condition turns out to be sample A. There you go. So one of these gives us the minimum, sample A. So let's look at the scattering for sample 13, pure D water, and sample 8, zero average contrast condition. Sample 13 intensity goes up like crazy, while for sample 8 it's flat, doesn't change much, except when you get to the two-phase region. Okay, so already we see uh, a big difference. So it looks like we caught the zero average condition rather well, and we're seeing only single chains. So doing fitting to a single chain type of model, like with fully swollen coil, I mean with uh, excluded volume, we see the single chain RG goes down a little bit, while the apparent RG goes up like crazy because it's catching into chains. So phase separation involves almost like two effects here. Chains are shrinking, partial chain collapse, while they're phase separating. So results, this system has two effects. The uh, phase separation, LCST 132, as well as chain collapse or partial collapse, single chain RG decreases. Final words, science technique is used for mixing demixing studies of polymers, uh, solutions in mixed solvents, solvation mixed solvents, polymer single chain conformations. It's useful for these type of studies. Acknowledgement, Michael Hoare, Hu Chang. Thank you. Check it out.